Learning Techniques teaches its exercises in rewiring the brain to learn at its offices and through home courses available on DVD. John Heath says improvement begins almost immediately and the results are permanent. From a uh, um, scholastic point of view, people who we work with generally on average will gain about two years in subjects that they're having trouble with uh, in about a six month period of time. Uh, and we don't teach those subjects. We only work with the processes that are necessary to do the subjects. When I talk to people, they are so excited when they find out that you can change these things. They have always thought that their child was bright. They always thought there was an answer, they just couldn't find it in the usual uh, places they had looked. And so when we talk about how your brain turns teaching into learning and how it remodels itself, they, they uh, relate to that immediately and they're ready to go. Like reading. Reading, in order to read, your eyes have to be able to track. They have to be able to go from letter to letter to letter and word to word to word and line to line to line and they can't skip things. And they got to take those, that information in a smooth order. Now people will sometimes, we'll work with them for a short period of time, maybe, maybe uh, two or three weeks, and they'll come back and they'll say, I already see changes. Now all those five weaknesses that an individual has won't just uh, disappear. Some of them take longer, like one of the processes that takes a long time is concentration. It takes a long time to develop the circuits that a person needs. But other things like visual tracking is much faster. And, and it's surprising when your eyes will find things easily how the amount of accurate input coming into your brain explodes. And then of course your intelligence has much more information to use than it's ever had before. When people call They'll say, uh, my child's lazy. And I'll say, I don't think so. Most children aren't lazy. Um, you and I, I'll say to the parent, you and I love to do things that are easy for us, right? They say, yes. They, we hate to do things that are hard, right? Yes. They, uh, but it doesn't mean we can't do things that are hard, it just means we don't like to do things that are hard. Uh, and you, your child, is just like you and I. They don't like to do things that are hard. So what you have to do is you have to make things easier and then they'll self-motivate. A superintendent came to, uh, to Learning Techniques, came to me and said, I've heard about your research. I wonder if you've ever tried it in a school. And we said, no. And he says, well, do you think it would work in a school? And I said, yes. And he said, well, I don't want to make a big deal out of this, but he said, I'd like to try it on just a few students. Would you be willing to do that? And I said, yes. So he, he gave us six students to work with. Three, he didn't do anything with. They were just a control group. And then the other three, we worked with. And he got about halfway through the procedures that we use, um, and these, children we were working with started to move ahead and the other children didn't. So he, he called me and he said, listen, I can't, I can't keep, uh, keep leaving these, these other three behind. He said, I, I can't um, leave these children struggling when I know I can fix the problem. What does an experienced educator think of this approach to helping bright kids who can't learn? Ralph Pomeroy is a retired school superintendent in Utah. After allowing the learning techniques approach to be tested in his school system, he wants it to be widely adopted by educators. I like to look into the future and see, try innovative kinds of things. The educational establishment is pretty lumbering. It takes time to change and make adjustments and things. So lead out, be the point man, do whatever you can to make adjustments and changes and things that will help kids. That's what we're all about, is making kids learning easier for them. And so that's where I went with this, this project, to try to help kids that were struggling. One of the things Learning Techniques does is not only do we work with them and their ability to learn, but it affects their, their self-esteem to a point where that 
just gives it another boost simply because now they know they can. They always thought they couldn't, but now they know they can if they work a little harder and work this way and, and overcome these difficulties, then they can be just as bright or brighter and, than the other kids. In the beginning of this program, parents were skeptical. We had to do a real good sales job on them and talk them in to letting us try this program on their student. Uh, to the point where four years after we started the program, we had a waiting list of parents wanting their kids in the program. So the parents sold it to the other parents. I didn't have to do that because it worked and it, it, it made a difference in these kids. But when you go through the program and they overcome the difficulties in the brain with the learning, then they're fixed. And that's the way, the way I talk about it with parents. Wouldn't it be better to fix this child than to just make it easier for him? So that's what the approach we took. We, we wanted to fix some kids. Uh, once the brain has overcome those difficulties by making the connections that need to be made, because they weren't made by, during the environmental time or during the, the socialization time, then they can be just as good a student than anybody else and the behavior changes. Their behavior is, is they're self-confident. They know that they can do what everybody else can do. Teachers welcome this project and this program once they understand it. It takes a little while for teachers to really understand it, but once they understand it, they know what it'll do to help their particular student or students, then it frees them to work more or longer or better with a whole class and not just be focused on a few kids that are struggling that they have to spend a whole lot of extra time with. So the whole class benefits. If uh, you have a bright child and you know they're bright because of some of the other things they do and the way they can communicate with you, but they struggle with learning for whatever the reason, this is a good chance to try to find out why they are struggling with learning and make their lives a lot more pleasant for them and the parents by allowing this kind of a program to fix, overcome the difficulties the child's having. Schools don't do anything wrong. Uh, what, they, what they do is they work with only part of the learning process, that is the introduction of information. They do that and they do a very good job of that. But if a child can't capture that information and neurologically turn it into learning, then the teaching doesn't do any good. The problem is, is that the child isn't neurologically capable of turning teaching into learning easily. And that's why they need all those repetitions. And so everybody gets discouraged. The teacher gets discouraged, the child gets discouraged, it starts to shut down, and the parent doesn't know what to do. And it's a, it's a, a difficult situation. But it it's, can be fixed. If you, if you understand that there's a neurological phase of learning and you understand that there's plasticity that your brain possesses to remodel itself and fix those weaknesses, then those problems can go away and the teacher wins, the child wins, and the parent wins. And that's this special edition of the American Health Journal. <laughs>